So, so we 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 the set of the fisheries and the carp, the different fishes that is available for you. And uh, even though we are showing you tilapia here, our emphasis is catfish and uh, the different systems that is available, the earthen ponds, and how you can bring water from the river into the various pond, which is earthen pond or the concrete tank, which you can see here. Then of course, the advanced uh, system of operation, which we say is not sustainable in the context of Nigeria, you know, because of the high cost of uh, power that is required to sustain it. So we said it's available, you know, and if you can run it for commercial fingerlings and juvenile, you are likely going to make profit out of it if you put some other things in place. The tank system is available and uh, we now zeroed into intensive mobile pond farming which is uh, the hinge thing now that uh, our, my fellow colleague here is driving, you know, and establishing in various states, almost 10 states, almost 10 states of this country at the moment. And uh, you will do well to get in touch with him to help you if you intend, in case you want to establish one uh, from designing to finished products and also marketing channel can be created for you. So intensive pond. And of course, if you are going to commercial, we told you that five things, your fingers will explain to you your market, which is the key. And because fish is goes to water, you need the right fish anyway, then the right quality of water they feed and the stock is very critical. And you cannot undermine the place of management. So uh, you need to set it up and in setting it up, there are things that you must, you know, major things that you must put into consideration. You know, the land you are going to use or the system you want to use. And of course the site must be suitable for and accessible as well. And there are other things that you must consider. What is the surrounding uh, um, physiological operations in that place? Or else you can just find out one day your fish uh, water is polluted and you are out of business. So and so we said that your utility is very important, your power you need and everything. Of course, the road network that make your goods accessible to uh, your customer and other facilities is very important. And uh, so we took you through all of that and we said, if you must not fail, there are some things you must put into consideration. You know, and all of that was explained to you about uh, 11 of them. So, okay, 13 of them, 15, 16, 16 of them. And uh, many people fail precisely. We see them coming to fisheries because they hear the news, they read newspaper reports. And you can bear me record that uh, from, this, from these lectures that we've given you the last three days, uh, it's not a lazy man business. However, there will be return on investment if you pay attention to every detail that has been communicated to you. And uh, our expert here took time to explain to us the fact that fish are sold in weights. And so that must be your focus. And knowing that your feed conversion ratio must be your priority. Yes, every sir. stage, every stage of this, uh, your target, your, your focus, you know, uh, at every point in time. And that call for, you know, paying attention to all of this farm operation. You know, what do you stock? What do you feed? Your sampling techniques, record taking, and of course, ensuring that there's stress free, you know, your farm and the stress, because it could be stressful, okay? The manpower can be stressful, the fish can be stressful, the ecosystem itself can generate stress for itself, so you know how to manage it. So. In details, we explain to you the stocking, you know, aspect, summary of what guide, how to stock, you know, grow out pawns. All of those things are there, pay attention to them, you know, because today is around, we're rounding up the class, pay attention to each of them. If I were you, I would pick up my barrel and pencil and go in detail. Like I said, when we're sharing with you, that most of the time, like me, you know, we go to the classroom, learn everything we need to know, put our book behind us and do whatever we think we can do and expect results. 
you will not get result if you don't follow this instruction. So um, he's showing us the, art the article he, he, he uh, pioneered 2018, shows you how you, know, you can get your finger in so that you, if you get it wrong there, you may not survive the first two months. You just waste your feed and nothing will come out of it, you know, and all of that. So all of this was explained to us. He will show us a video here and explain a few things to us to, uh, to refresh our minds. Of course, we focus our attention on the feed because the business you are going to enter into, 70% of that, you know, or it was sometimes 75% of your, your creating costs, yes, you sir. end up spending it on feed. And so, apart from the fish quality, you need the feed quality and quantity. That's why you have to monitor what goes in. And uh, there's an adage, a grand rule, like here, painted a picture graphically. You know, is number, there are three of them. You know, please get this right. If you feed them with garbage, you get the garbage. Nothing more, nothing less. And if you don't monitor your, you know, your FCR, you'll be sure that you will just waste you know, all your money and uh, you will not make profit out of your business and you cannot pay your loan, which is your focus, of course, also to be able to live and make your business sustainable uh, so that you can be part of people who are solving United Nations Sustainable Goals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, of course, your price of, your, the price of feed, we told you, the different feed, you know, and their prices, different feed that are available, the imported, the Nigerian made and the indigenous and how to manage all of these feeds, you know, were, were shown to you by uh, our consultants and uh, field experts in this uh, world. He, he spoke to us from experience, experience, experience that yielded for him. You know, in my own little way, when I was actively practicing, it yielded for me. I started from a plot of land. By the next year, I bought another land. I built my farmhouse, okay, you know, in that place. I mean, I would crave the indulgence of uh, Akin, you know, to please visit my farm and uh, also see what, how I can rejuvenate it and, you know, so, you know. You, you, pay, you pay site visit charges, sir. My, my <laughs> all my pleasure, all my pleasure. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do just that because I know there will be return on my investments. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately, like he said, what feed you use and uh, everything you do, it's your decision. But we guarantee you that you can make the best of all of these opportunities available, you know, in the world of fisheries. You know, it's on tapped area. And uh, as you are launching into it, you'll be glad you did. You can even go ahead and mentor others. So different feed that must be part of the constituent in case you want to formulate your own feed. But uh, he said to us that, you know, um, if you can connect to, you know, uh, those commercial credible feed meals, okay, you can, uh, of course, those who compound feed as well, floating feed and the rest, depending on the system you're operating. If you connect to them, there's more likelihood that, you know, it will be better for you rather than, you know, because they have a large economic of scale, they're able to get their, all of this protein, you know, yes, the so. energy, they're able to get it in large quantity and uh, manage their costs. So you end up, you know, saving yourself all the energy, you know, so you can, you know, if you calculate very well and do the right thing, you will, just, you will still get your profits, you know, uh, by all means. So, and there's something is very important, taking records, uh, pond management, tank management, feed management, and the record sheets management. In fact, this is a very major key I want us to pay attention to, okay? You know, every day you do things, record it, because it will speak for you you know, when the when crisis arises, when a consultant like him come to your field, he can better advise you because you have you, you have record of what you are doing. And if you are doing something wrong, you can be corrected. But if you just don't keep record because your brain cannot capture everything you do on a daily basis, you know, you will miss out and it cannot guide you appropriately. So here we have feeding regime. Please, if, you should keep this. You know, you should keep it. If you start... It may be very difficult over time you get you know used to it and it become a habit and you you get paid for it so taking record is critical you know in fact the the, the loan you are collecting require that you keep records you know and if you keep record even when you fail okay 
they will know that okay, this person has done the best he could. You know, it yeah. just because things, you know, unforeseen circumstances happened. That's why you had in you know, all of that. And uh, even people can write away on bad depths and say, oh, this person put in his efforts, but things turn out the other way around. You know, that can speak for you. So taking a record is very important. And we told you that, give you a summary of what, you know, importance of doing so and the implication. Of course, you have to manage stress because the water system, you introduce the fish. The day you introduce the fish into that water system, the day, sometimes I just wonder, once you put fish there, the water system just changes, you know. And of course, you have to manage the change, manage everything together. We gave you the details here. It's quite explicit. He has done a good job in putting everything together and harvesting. Uh, there are techniques in harvesting. It showed us that you cannot afford to just wait and allow the fishmongers to come and just take advantage of all your labor from the one. You just have to be able to uh, be strategic in managing your fish. Of course, took us through the processing of the fish. In fact, we had a lot of videos on it. Um, so that's the way, that's what we did the first day. And uh, it was a beautiful time. And the uh, second day, we just uh, uh, reverse back to what we did. And uh, we show you that you must be disciplined with your finances. We went through all of that, you know, and even went overboard to even do some few things, your how to get your credit and what it's meant for. Not all credit is meant for fees capital. Okay, like yeah. the loan you are taking now, it's expected that there are some basic things that is in place. If it's not in place, we'll be telling you more about how you can take advantage of the value chain of in fisheries so that you will not have to uh, be in debt without knowing it. So this is where we are today. Um, at this point, I will uh, like to uh, welcome my honorable colleague to take us from where we were, uh, where we are right now. Um, um, so it was, I will, I'll come back to show us also a few things I know about value chain, but he has experienced practically all aspects of the value chain in adding value to his products. So um, Akin, as my professor call you, uh, it's not me, but I'm just echoing what my professor call you, say Akin Kingfish. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Sam. Beautiful recap. Um, it has been a pleasure teaching this class with you. I've enjoyed it. All right. So um, thank you very much. Thank you to all our students. And um, yeah, so we're excited to be rounding up um, our class today. Um, um, and um, today we'll be exploring the whole value chain of the fish business. And, um, and um, 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 so let's just start with um, a question from a question to Kizzy. Um, I think Christy is new. I also, I'm just seeing Musa Ibrahim for the first time. Um, I, they might have been, maybe, maybe I didn't just see, but I know Kizzy was with us yesterday. So Kizzy, let's just hear from you. Unmute yourself, unmute your mic. And let's just hear from you. What was your highlight from yesterday's class? What information surprised you the most? And what do you expect from today's class? Today's class is supposed to be on value chain. Value chain being the whole process. You see the different players that play in the fish industry. So um, just, let me just hear from Casey. Um, what was your highlight from yesterday's class? And what information surprised you the most? And what do you expect from today's class? Floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. Um, from yesterday's uh, recap, one of the things that hit me most is from the management aspect. Um, a lot of us take um, farm management to be different from the usual running of a company or a factory. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, it is even more intense yes, sir. than that that as little as your feeding and your water quality, you have to keep record of all that, if possible, on a daily basis, especially when you are starting. Yeah. Yes. And we, we, we neglect the processing aspects 
a lot of us just go out and sell when we can even um, process to different level and even explore in having different flavors in yes. our fish yes and sending it to the market yes. and um a lot of times we just sell to those people that resell like in abuja most of the labor is being done by the farmers but the middlemen just come to buy it and you wow. go and see they are actually the ones making the money wow and sometimes you even go to the fish market you'll be shocked that you find that there's, sh there's shortage of fish in the market up till today the minimum wow. you can buy fish outside the fish in fact in the fish market even outside the fish market in abuja is from 700 upwards you can never wow. get lower than that wow so i i really learned that a lot the management and the selling and the processing there's still yeah. a lot to be done. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank you very much, Kizzy. Um, thank, thank you. you. You can mute, you can mute the mic now, so that um, because my network is quite poor. So um, today's class is supposed to be on value chain, all right, the old value chain of fish, and so we'll start by showing you some videos. What we did as we rounded up yesterday was we showed a video to show the whole process of the life of the fish. We started from the broodstock, that's the parent, to the baby fishes, to the fingerlings, to the juveniles, to the melange, to the table size, the processing, and the feeds. So that was the whole cycle of fish for you to see physically with yourself. We're going to do that right now again to start the class. So when I play the videos, I want you to follow mentally. Just look as if you are, you are following the whole cycle. This old videos I will show you now is like maybe like five months or six months. But, you know, we just compress them into different stages so that you can understand and get a better grip of where we, where we are. So um, let's start with, um, with the beginning. How do you get your baby fishes that you are supposed to grow on your farm? You get your baby fishes by bringing both the male and the female fish together to make the baby fishes that people now buy and grow on the farm. Now, they don't mate artificially. As you can see in the video we are watching, this is the male fish. The male fish um, is split open for us to remove the sperm sac, the sperm of the male. It is the sperm of the male that we will now welcome Jesse. It is the sperm of the male that we will now um, use to fertilize the eggs of the female, you know. And um, prior to this, you want to make sure that your broodstock is big. Is if, if you you expect that if the broodstock is big, then their children also have the potential to grow to big sizes. You don't want to you don't want to um, use runts. You don't want to use small fishes as broodstock because. I mean, you just think that we have good genes. So if the if the if the if the um, if the parents are big, then the children have the potential to be big also. So you want your broodstock to be at least two years old so that they are mature. You know, they are mature. Um, to be honest, I don't expect anybody who is collecting a loan to say is collecting a loan for an archery. Um, it takes reputation to sell baby fishes. People need to be to trust that, oh, your fish is like me now. I have the reputation for it. Everybody knows Aki fish, Aki fish. So people call me Aki fish. I want to buy fingerlings. I want to buy juveniles. Or like you, that you are an unknown name. Anybody who is buying fingerlings or juveniles from you will be taking a risk because they don't know you before as they were. All right. So um, it, it, I'm not expecting anybody who is taking a loan to say he wants to start with fingerlings and juveniles. And even the reality is that the whole arching process is not 100% complete. So imagine if you take a loan and you arch your fish and they don't come out so well. You know, that, that might not be so good for you. So um, after removing the span sack from the male, as you have seen, we then strip the female fish of our eggs. Now, what we call stripping is that we use our hands to press out the eggs from the female stomach. Prior to this time, we must have injected her with some hormones that help her release her eggs easily. So she has the eggs there already, but to make it easy to remove, we inject her with some injections early on so that 
the moment we just press it, as you can see us pressing it now, the eggs just come out. Um, doctor mentioned a good point yesterday when he asked me that, um, can we do this process any time of the day? And yes, we can actually do it any time of the day. But because it takes like between 8 to 12 hours after the injection of the female for her to be ready to be stripped, just like you are watching right now. It's always, we always prefer to do that injection in the night so that all of this process, we do them in the daytime, you know, when we can see physically. But if you can't see, if, if you do this, if you inject in the morning, then you have to do all of this work in the night. And, you know, for a farm that does not have living accommodation for your staff, or maybe the farm is inside the bush, all those kind of things, you know, it might not be so convenient for staff to move in the night, etc., etc. But this farm, but you know, some farms have living staff, so I mean that's possible and that's very doable. So you strip the female of her eggs. You can see us pressing it out here. All right, we've already prepared where we'll lay the eggs. We'll lay the eggs in a vat. The water has been brought out. Um, the water has been pumped like 24 hours before this. All right, so that the water is well oxygenated. The more oxygenated the water is, the more, you know, you, the more results you get from your arching. So after getting the eggs, you now bust the sperm sac into the eggs. All right. So you bust the sperm sac into the eggs like this. You can see me busting that sperm sac we removed from the male into the eggs. And then the sperms get mixed together with the eggs of the female. We already we want to spray the eggs. We want to lay them on a net. The net is called kakaba net. All right, the net has holes so that the, the arched fries will drop from the holes of the net into the water. Once you spray the spams on the eggs like this, they become sticky. So they stick on any place. So you can see us mixing it. Some people use saline water to make sure that the spams touches every eggs, all right? Um, as I told you earlier yesterday, I told you that if you get two males, it will be good so that in case one of the spam sac is not good, you have a backup already. It's not when you have injected the female feeling that you now be thinking of, ah, uh, let me go and get another male from the fish pond. No, just bring out two males already from the beginning. And then we now start laying our eggs on the nets inside our oxygenated water. So laying the eggs, you lay it very thinly very you spread it very thinly you can see the way we are spreading it this point very thinly you spread it very thinly on your net so that you know um you have the eggs the eggs now stick to that net you know they become sticky and stick to the net and then um, you start flow through flow through of clean water to make sure that the water doesn't because the eggs pollute that water very fast you know so after one hour flow through of oxidation of your arching vat should be carried out to ensure the best results from your arching. So after one hour of laying your eggs, all right, the spans, the, the whole thing fertilizes within one minute, all right? So it's fertilized already. At least the ones that were arched, it's fertilized already. So after one hour, you then start pumping new water so that the water is always fresh, always clean, all right, to, to start um, passing water through your ponds. So this is what you get. You've, you've spread your eggs on the fish, or you spread your eggs on the net. You can see we have like maybe like 50 or 70 vats here that we use to um, spray our eggs. Then after 30 hours, you remove the net because the arched fries would have dropped from the holes, those tiny holes in the net. They would have dropped to the bottom of the vats, the ones that arched. The ones that did not arch, that are still on the top, they are not going to arch again. And they will just be polluting the water and you'll be losing the newly born fish you know that like babies they are very fragile so you want to shake it well so that anyone that is still on top can wiggle down and then you remove the net all right so that's like after one day all right and now you can see us that's us shaking the net and removing the net from the vats all right so whatever is at you can see that there are still some on the on the net uh -huh. those ones they are not actually again they will, they will most likely have turned white because they spoiled. <laughs> but the fries now go to the bottom of the vat. Now, when the fries just, when the fishes are just born, they have this egg, this palm sack, this egg yolk that is on them. And that's what they consume for the first three days. They won't come to the top. Some of them will start coming small, small. But is that fish fast? So for the first like four days of you actually, you're not feeding anything. You're just 
watching your monitoring temperature, you know, because temperature affects them a lot. You can wake up in the morning and, you know, you just discover that maybe the rain fell, it's very cold, and you just get to the farm and you see that your fishes have died, you know. So um, after three days, the fries will come to the surface. After three days of you not feeding them, they will come to the surface of the pond in search for food, all right? So look at them now. You can see them. They will come to the top. They will be looking for food, looking for food. That's when we now start feeding them. All right, powdered feed. They like powder, you know. Um, if you go to feed news, I think it's um, um, I forgot the name now, but people use different things. Um, um, but all of these feed companies have their own fry feed. All right, so you can see them swimming around, and um, yeah, that is how we start. So the value chain actually starts from brew stock. I've explained that brew stock is two years old fish, um, big fishes. We like them to be two kg and above. All right, so let me just do videos because we'll still we'll still talk about all of this in the next uh, in the next um, when, when we go back to our slides. So that's how your fishes are born. Now, after after we have fishes like that, we then they then grow. All right, so I I, I wanted to show you some new videos. I hope they are here. Um, I think I tried to select them yesterday. Um. um Hold on, give me a minute. Okay, yeah. So after like three weeks or two weeks, all right? Yeah. So after like two weeks or three weeks, you have this. They are three weeks, five days. You can't give them more food, though. The lesson of it is not, not doing Yes, and all of that, all right? But they start growing to this, you know? I think this is like three weeks. And the best way is the feeder. Now maybe this. Now this one. Money manager, you can see. Manager, hundred, hundred. So using to feed fish. So that we're using to rear fish. Give them more food. Though. And the first word is this. Now nah, maybe this. Now nah, the funny manager will be this. <laughs> so in 10 years time, when I see, see, when I go still they remember, say, okay, oh, yes, this guy talk a move. We train them from, the, we've actually hatched them ourselves. They are about three weeks now. And they are doing really, really fine. These are thousands of fishes. You don't need document tamale. You need to go release my documentary. I will come show other people. Say they are marketing, they don't share my own. They are three weeks, five days. You can't give them more food though. And the first word is this. After hatching them, we, I showed you the video of how we hatch them. And then we've kept them for like two weeks, three weeks. They get to that size. And then, um, and then um, let's see, where do we get to now? From there, they get to, um, so we've kept them for so long. And now we have them. So now they, they, at four weeks, they now get to fingerlings, all right? Fingerlings and juveniles. Just think of it like um, a child. And when I say a baby, you have a picture of what I'm talking about. When I say a infant, you know what I'm talking about. If I say toddler, you know what I'm talking about. If I say child, you know what I'm talking about. If I say teenager, you see that it's still the same fishes. They've just, con they've just continued growing older. So we had fries. Fries are fishes that were just hatched. All right. So within first week and three weeks, they are still called fries. All right. But at four weeks, 
they then get to the stage that they are called fingerlings, all right? So some people buy fingerlings, some people buy juveniles. Um, after four weeks, between four to six weeks, they are fingerlings. Between six to eight weeks, they are juveniles. So it's still the same fish, it's just that it's now older. So let's say that, that our fishes that we hatched, that you've seen us feeding now, let's say we've now sold them to a farmer, which is you. Okay. Um, so I can, so what do you advise for its pattern? You are getting your fishes in your farm. We've taught you how to prepare your farm. This is a mobile phone. Um, um, so, and now you are introduced. Our water quality is top notch. Um, our, you know, our management practices is top notch. Um, we can stop doing all of that fish to the point. This is, this is, um, okay. this is, this is, this is, this is, and we are now introducing this to the farm. Yeah, we've got the Now the fish is now start, we now start feeding them. As I told you, fish is doing what I do. So the market has four hours, you know, in production of fish. We want to make sure that at this stage, I usually feed like three times a day. 8, 2, 8, 8 a.m., 2 p.m., 2 p.m. So we do, you know, we are giving them a very good food. We have the pieces in the phone now. Um, um, let's move on. Um, so, um, I, I think I showed you this video when we started that um, fishes don't grow at the same rate. All right, they don't grow at the same rate. So, um, some of them will be bigger than others. We taught you how to select how to. Oh, now, see all these fish. Uh, they are all from the same. They are all born the same time. Time. All right, but look at their different sizes. They are all from the same father and mother at the same time. But look at their different sizes. You see how big these ones are. You see how big they are. Now look at the next one. This. Um, look at these ones are smaller than those ones. Though they are still big. They are still their peers or their age mates, as in same day, same fish, same parent. Look at this one. These are like the standard. <laughs> this? These, ones. these ones are smaller than those ones you saw. They are from the same parents. And this. All right. Are all okay. fish from the same they set? As in, they yeah. are all born the same day. The right fingerlings and if not, imagine the farmer that stocked this in his farm. You know that his fishes are big. Look at him. He stopped this one. <laughs> To the person who stopped this one, you know, to the person who stopped this one now, you know, this one too is living his fishes. But those ones will always be bigger, though they are the same. You want to make sure you get to this. You want to make sure that. And this, you know, are all fish from the same set, as in they are all born the same day. How to make sure you are getting the best fishing together. Right, let's continue. We introduce our fishes to our ponds. Um, you know, some people buy fingerlings. I showed you how we introduce them. This is juvenile. So we get them, we introduce the juveniles. You see that these ones are bigger than those ones that we introduce in that form of now that place. So these are juveniles. We've stocked juveniles to our pond. Right? So we now start feeding. Right? So um, this value chain now, we talked about food stock, we talked about um, hatching, right? So this is all the great fish for food stock, they are just food stock farmers. Some other people, they are only hatchers, they only hatch fish, all right? And they sell fingerlings and juveniles, and that's the end of their own production cycle. They are also fish farmers, they are also in this value chain that we are talking about. Um, so you buy fingerlings and juveniles, after that you need to feed them. So you go to the food store. Crown fish feed. These are imported feeds. Um, in our last class, we explained the difference between imported sinking. Uh, we explained FCR. You will notice that Dr. Sam has been hammering on that FCR, which is also one of the most important things in fish farming. You want to make sure that your feed is being converted to weight. That means as you are feeding the fish, it's not as if you are just throwing fish, you are just throwing the feed away. The fish is actually growing. You know, you are watching it. You are seeing that it's growing. Um, 
Average weight. So I wanted to show you some. This is tilapia. I was explaining in our first class how you know tilapia. You don't necessarily you they, they, they grow to maybe like 200 gram, 300 gram, 500 gram, unless if it is you know male um, dominated tilapia. But okay, let's come back to catfish. So there are farm operations. You pick a sample of the farm. You can see us doing it behind me there at the back. We take a sample to make sure that we are calculating our FCR. I've talked about farm operations and sampling and to make sure that you do you take your records regularly so this is us taking our records take a sample of the pond and measure their weight so that we can see a corresponding increase in you know in the fish weight all right so um we do farm operations and now depending on the type of pond you are wearing some people um, we use etting ponds so i showed you this yesterday that this is the etting pond you know um, the land is not usual all right, you know you cannot be digging somebody's land like that. And then it's always best in places where there's like springs, you know, and rivers, all right? You can imagine the so imagine a These are new projects that are starting like today. Like, you know, that's well. So you have to find, um, unless it's your own land though, and maybe you have stream of it's not really you know, advising in urban slash semi-urban environment, all right? So, this is our epic bond project. So, uh, this is our new project that we're starting we today. When we finish this. Um, okay, so I can't find it here, but um, I thought I showed a video yesterday of us when we finished the epic bond. Um, I can't find it here right now. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, basically, um, as I have told you of concrete ponds, but I also told you that concrete ponds almost always leak. All right, so people build these concrete ponds, but they leak, and they keep patching, patching, patching. What they now do is that they now keep patching and they try to keep it down. That's why they keep patching it down. All right, so that's just because it's like that. Just keep patching it down. Instead of doing all of this, you keep it in the middle. So mobile phones are like the best thing in the fish farming right now. Um, uh, let me show you some of them. So you can have them in your. So this way, because you don't want your farm to be too far from you. Why would small farms like this somewhere that would take an hour to your farm? It's not advisable. But you can leave it in the kitchen. You can leave it in the backyard. But you need all the water. This is Asha Pond's live in Dutse Abuja. This is Asha Pond's live in Dutse Abuja. Let me also show you um, different others. So look at look at this now. So you can see that these are environments, these are like towns, urban centers. You can see other houses beside it, unlike those earthen ponds that you see that it was inside bush, you know. You can see other houses beside these ones, and you can see us rearing our fish there. All right. So people have this at the back of their houses, you know. Uh, people have this in their land that oh they can just fence and you know be secured and you know you keep your fishes all right so you can arrange the ponds in sequence i think dr kubo was asking me of a diagram i think i'll still show you some um, you can arrange the ponds in a sequence so that you maximize space that you have on your farm all right so um look at look at you can see we arrange this ones just side by side themselves so it's like 100 by 
100 by, was it, I think it was 80 by 10. Then we split that into blocks. So once you have, um, so you can set this up. Let me show you. Uh, okay, look at this now. Okay, look at the points. You see that we just set them up linearly. All right. So we set this up linearly. And since you are going to, so you can remove this, dismantle it. You can do this in a rented apartment, in a rented place. Move it to your own land when you are when you buy your own. You know, uh, you, you, you need to sell the land. You've not done anything. You've not done any permanent concrete that you have to destroy. You have not devalued your land. All right. So, uh, so you can see we took this from some years back. This is Asha Pond, and. Um, this is a 3,000 capacity fish farm. So with, it was constructed in just three with days. Mobile pumps, you know, you can mobile pumps. We, we set them Thank up you. as quick. You know, within five days, you set up the whole farm. You know, you can imagine. So this is what, uh, let me show you. This is what. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Asha Pont. We are here in Shangutero, part of Lagos State. Aja. Uh, this is this collector. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Asha Pont. We are here in Shangutero, part of Lagos State, Aja. Uh, this is the skeleton. As you can see, this is the long one. farm is set up you know look at look at this so this is people's houses this is town this is the urban environment you don't need to value the land and do whatever it is you are doing um, let me show you um, yeah so i think we're done with that so you've seen how we hatched our fishes you see how we nurse them um, you see how we introduce them to the pond so now let's say our fishes are now four weeks with us all right, so you do spot feeding, meaning that they know where they come to eat. They have to go. They know the sound. They know the train. They know how to. They know to come and pick their food. You can see me here now, um, managing my fish. So, so now we've been keeping these fishes for so long. You follow the story, the old value chain. Um, I've talked about group stock. I've talked about archery. Talk about um, introducing yeah, well, yeah. you buying yeah, them well, yeah. as you have now become the grow out farmer. Go out. That means you bring them, you grow them out. You understand? So that's a go out farmer. I think about food. That now, by this time, you know, they start you know, on the farm. Farm operations are going on. They are taking average with every two weeks or every 10 days. Um, um, yeah, and we are feeding our fish. Uh, so now they are bigger. It's always into our production cycle. So, yeah. So we, we are feeding, and then now we've come to, um, so we now start sorting. Sorting means that we are removing the big ones from the small ones, all right? We are sorting. Um, so we are sorting, we need we are removing the big ones. That's why you don't want to have one pond. You don't want to have one big pond. You want to have several small ones so that you can separate the big ones from the small ones. You can still separate counting, you know, taking average weight. Our fishes are going to be straight. I hope you are following. Um, I hope you are following the way you know, we are going to the old chain of it. So that's that. Our fishes are going to be straight. We are separating them and then. Um, we are going bigger now. We are two months into our project. All right. We are two months into our I'm set to. I'm set to. 
I showed it in the class where we were feeding, where I was teaching you that, you know, you don't just pour all your feed at once, you know, you feed gradually. All right. So, um, okay, I think this is it. This is how to feed your catfish. You pour your feed slowly, 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 watching them as they eat your feed. You don't just pour all the feed at once and hope they finish it. No, you keep pouring gradually gradually until they are filled and they start going away this is ake fish thank you this is how to feed your catfish so the houses that we set up these things so um our fishes have grown we've eaten um we've they've been feeding you know we've been keeping them for two months three months um farm operations everything is going on well and now we now want to harvest them for smoking size so I thought yesterday we did a very comprehensive video on smoking fish, I thought, but um, how we start is that we, from the farm, from the ponds, you know, we harvest them, you know, you want to weigh what you are saying. face for you, my daddy. This is more than 100 days. Let's for you, my daddy. This is more than 100 days. For three months and two weeks now. Cover it with salt, all right, in a bowl, and then let's see. You can see that we are measuring that. That is scale there. And then we now kill them with salt. After killing them with salt, we start. We put them inside a bowl with salt water, and then you stir them like this. Right, sorry. After that, now Okay, sorry. Water like this inside a bowl and a basket. This guy now we use a bowl of salt. You see the back. That's a bowl of salt at the back of this guy now. That's a black bowl with salt inside. And then you rinse the food. Okay, I'll follow the process. I will keep these fishes for three months plus, you know, and then, um, you know, it's cleaning the fishes like this. Right, that's the only thing. And after cleaning them, we cut them and we got them. I found a video yesterday, so I wanted to show you. Uh, let me see it. I found a video where we were doing that just yesterday, and I said, oh, oh, oh I, I wish I had shown you guys this one um, yesterday, but now I can't even see the video anymore. Um, um, let me see that. Okay, so um, you, you can see <laughs> Okay, so No. Today is a smoking fish day. Okay, try and do it yourself so that to show that you have learned you have learned something. Women, you know, they wanted to start processing their fish in NAFDAQ standard fish, so they invited me to come and teach them. I think this was maybe like two or three years ago. So the women are learning how to fold the fish. Very good, Mr. Jai, that was very good. 
Very That's good. Okay, try and do it yourself. And then we arrange them on our rack. Of your following. Those are our abilities. That's what we now. We arrange them on the rack of the students. I've also explained that you will be thinking the Duara of the people that ask you to As you know, how do you explain that all of them like this? And then you have a photo. So this is the intestine that we remove from the city that we can go and go to that side of the 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 of the side of the side of the side of the so I was thinking that you might need to have that from by your own. You might need to have the one from the one that you need to have the one that you need to have the one that you need to have. Can you come with me? No, no, no. After that, you still then need to have the one that you need to have. You still need to have the one that you need to have. You still need to have the one that you need to have. You have the one that you need to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This video, I was sending these fishes to a client somewhere, all right? So the client asked me to make their own label and put it on top. But that does not concern me because I'm a fish expert. I'm not selling my fish. So the guy was asking me to do the gift for the client. The label is not fine. I said, it's fine, you know, because my own is to sell fish. So a lot of people, they are just processing fish, you know, and or, or what I mean, a lot of people just buy these fishes and put their own name on top and sell it. No, 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 The fish um, smoking business tribes, you know, and a lot of people, you know, just buy that. So after that, you take your fishes for delivery, you know. This is Akin Fish's fish. Um, yeah, so you can see this now. This is the fish arranged in the oven. They stay there for like two days, three days for them to be dry enough. You know, you don't want, and there's a certain level of moisture content that is required that is needed for, um, there's a certain level of moisture content that is needed for your fish to stay long, right? So that's the smoking kiln, that's the thermometer, our, our own smoking kiln has thermometer so that you can see the heat. It also has an um, oil collector so you can collect the oil from the fish that is dropping and then you have to find any gluten and all of those parts. Um, so you can see that, that's somebody's business. The person has two ponds in the house and a smoking kiln and they always do that. So yeah, we've come about we've come to processing our stuff. So I've talked about deliveries. Supermarkets, you know. So um um, where am I now? Yeah, we, so our fishes have grown a bit to um, smoking size. We've processed them. Yes, we've processed them. Then, uh, then you can sell live sales. Okay. <laughs> 
bring my fishes and one day they come let me show you a video a, a picture so you know they come with their bowls like this we pack them inside the bowls look at the sack look at this place you see the sack they use it to cover the bowls and they load it into their cars and voila they are gone you know and you receive a lot you know um so that might be a better um, that might you know sometimes when you know for every farm you know liquidity is a very important thing you want to make sure you have cash on ground you know i smoke fish you know supermarket i explained to you yesterday that sometimes supermarkets will buy your fish they, they'll collect your fish but they won't pay you immediately they'll tell you they'll pay you when they finish selling it and then what happens is when they finish selling it they want to stock again so they will ask you for another batch and that they will pay you when they finish selling it. So it's almost as if you have some money always in some supermarket you are expected to collect. All right. So that might be a challenge um, for you know people that maybe a small scale farmer or whatever. But you can imagine this one now. Before you drive off, you pay. It just comes bam one day, bam. But you know, you are foregoing the um profits, the profit margins. Because you are making sure they don't influence your scale. You know, you are making sure they don't they don't dupe you from you know maybe packing your fish and tampering with the scale. So somebody is probably here making sure they don't load too much um, bowls inside the card and the ones you've counted. So it's usually a very um, it's usually a very um you know hands-on approach um so yeah live fish and what else what else okay this was the pond this is the video of the pond that we finished that i wanted to show you yes We have eight ponds here, um, natural flowing water. Yeah, you know the I think I have a video of us when we are feeding those. Okay, okay, I'm just seeing this chat now. Okay, Akubo, you're welcome. Uh, I'm just tired of patching some of my concrete ponds. Shibi, I told you, I told you, it always leaks. Can you please explain how we can avoid bitter taste in smoked fish? Yes, use salt, all right? Brine, salt brine. Soak them inside salt for like 30 minutes before you put them inside the smoking kiln. They will come out very sweet. I can, if you are in the bottom, when next you are in the bottom, we just come out, I will give you one of my packs. I mean, it's fish I have to give. I can give you fish, 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 fish. So just come, I'll give you uh, my fish so that you taste it, so that you see that we don't have that bitter taste in it. Just soak them in salt, salt. You eat it like this, you'll be eating it live. You know, I wanted to show you a video of, you know, I think I was showing it yesterday when my laptop died of our eating ponds, you know, okay? So look at, um, this is our two months fishes. And then, uh, let me see, let me see, okay. So, Management in the eating pond too. Let me show you. Wait, let me see. Do I have a video of that? Uh, where we drain the water. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, look at this. Okay, you can um, very hands-on with your with your um with your venture you know you cannot afford to just sit down somewhere or sleep somewhere it's work as as um as dr sam was mentioning earlier all right so uh 
um, let me see. So these are these are okay. These are see this mobile phone that is setting up in this compound. I think you could only take one at a time. Um, we're going to set this up. You can see that's 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 um, let me see what can I show you here again before I leave. Okay, I think this was um this was ten units of to be something different. They need to do hash This is the this is the construction of the point. This is the point. Them in sequence. I want to take a look. I actually want to see if I can show you when we were introducing fish into that place. Um, I have it somewhere, but looking for it might be a challenge now. Well, um, so maybe I would, I would, um, but I've showed you before, I showed you how we are. Um, okay, look at this now. So you just have this uh, yeah. and then you know, you know, so this, but this is a different this is a different uh, you know, a different farm. Um, I told you we have plenty uh, we have inventive farms so um the videos can be a little disjointed. However, so yeah, that's um, that's basically the whole fish cycle. I've I've showed you from the um hold on, let me get back to now. Okay, yeah. So I've shown you from the um from the arching to the from the broodstock to the arching to the nursing to you know introducing them to your farm to feeds to um you know um, let me see what this so that it does not spoil on time. All right, I explained that to you. So this is going to be inside. And you can ask um, the farm for children that you can make invoices available for, you know, the ponds. You can make invoices available for an oven, all right, um, for an oven so that you can process your fish. Um, something important, Dr. Sam said also that I want to also reiterate is how you can see this are perfect for you here. Something important, Dr. Sam said, which I also want to reiterate, is how your cost of operations, you know, your operations, you should make sure that you have enough money to actually do the operation, all right? So um, when you are writing your business plan for your loan and everything, yes, ponds, yes, oven, yes, um, some fixed costs, but you want to make sure that you know, your your cost of food, which is like 70 cents, all the 70 cents, Costs on the farm. You want to make sure you have that cash available to actually run the farm, right? And not just run one batch. I've explained earlier that you should have staggers, right? You should stagger your production. So you don't want to have 10,000 fishes coming out at the same time. No, nobody does that. You want to have 2,000 fishes, 2,000 fishes, 2,000 fishes in different batches, all right? So that you know, um, every month you have sales. You don't want to. You don't want to also for customers, and then next month. You don't have fish for them again. You know that that's a challenge. So um, yeah, um, I think I think that's a good video recap of where we are. So now we'll go back to our presentations. I'll hand over to Dr. Sam. If Dr. Sam is, um, what's the price of an oven that can smoke 500 fishes at a time? Okay, I'm just seeing these questions though. What are so what are the disadvantages? Okay, let me let me go up so I can just should I answer these questions now or we should answer it at the end of the class? Um, Dr. Sam, should I answer them now or at the end of the class? Hello, I think it would be okay if you answer them now because the participants, the, those are asked the questions are, are online now. General, welcome. Uh, we've been waiting for you since. 
So um, yeah, so let me start answering the questions. Just tired of patching some of my concrete. You will always, it will always leak. Eh? I've in my ten years of fish farming, eh? unless they don't tell you. See, let me. When you look at the concrete pond, let me give you the trick. You will see a line, or you will see a part that is whiter. That means they've patched it. <laughs> you will see a part that is just whiter. You want to see a part? They just patched it. You know, so the trick to it is just you start pulling to line the ponds. Once you start pulling to line ponds, you forget about it, all right? And it's good, you know. Okay. Uh, but not the normal yeah. tarpaulin. You know? There is a line. I if I can show you some I can fish. pictures, I can. I can fish. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Have you tried uh, sealed cement? It's really. Good. We have uh, this, those white ones. Those uh, those white ones that they say rubber cement and everything. All right. You know, it always just leaks. Almost, almost always. I don't let me say always because you know. But I mean, I myself, I'm a concrete pond farmer, and if you can see some of my, if you can see some, I deal with a lot of concrete. This is a recirculatory system, actually. This is a recirculatory system, but I deal a lot with concrete pond, so I is something I'm also experiencing. You know, so don't let me so that it's not as if um, I'm just as if I don't know about it or something like that. No, no, no. Um, so I wanted to show you that. Um, Well, okay, I was saying, Sha. Okay, hey, I wanted to show Doctor. Um, I think Akubo was the one who asked me about. I want you to see something. Hey, yes, you are the one who asked me about a design of. I will answer the questions, but you are the one who asked me about the design of a farm, that, how to arrange the ponds and everything else. And I said I was going to show you a video. So this was a farm I constructed in 2018 or 2017, like three years now. Now look at this is the so this was the this is the the client that gave me the job. This is the plan I drew for them. You can see prepared by Kingfish. You can see it here. And then I was not there. I traveled, I left. I was not around for a while. All right. And then they constructed the farm. You know, exactly. You know, that was the client when I came back into Nigeria. When I came back, so I, I, I saw I wanted to see the farm. So I designed this farm some years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've not been here since. And the farm is doing fine. And I'm just excited to see what so I designed exactly in action. I, exactly how I you, know, you can see the farm. You can see the farm plan. I, I think I showed. So this is the farm and everything. I think I showed. Uh, hey, I wanted you to see the the, the ponds arrangement. Uh, and this is it. So this is the bowl. Though the uh, is an eighteen pond, though, but because it's in Odobolu, you know they they have this is what they call aquifer, meaning that the water just comes from the ground itself without pumping machine, without anything. The water just comes from the ground itself. So we had like two bowls there for these four ponds. Then we had a living area for the staff because it's not in town for the staff. Then we had a fish processing center. You can see it here. This brown one, this is fish processing center. Then we had a garden area because we wanted to farm some vegetables. So there. So this is the gate of the farm. You enter like this. I hope you can see my cursor. You enter like this. When you enter like this, is the office fish processing center you get to first. If you pass, if you pass here and you walk past the living area and you come inside the pond, ah, uh, you know that they know you. You, know, so you cannot just say somebody poisoned it. So you can see the. So that was the plan. I wanted to see that, but you know, all of this. So we can, you know, we can, we can um, identify. Um, let me see. Can do I have another video for you? Oh, and this is so this is the farm ahead. This place I'm standing on here at the back, right behind the person holding the screen here is where the garden area is. But this is the fish processing center here. That's the farm here. You know, um it's beautiful to see the work of your hands. I was the one who designed this farm some years ago, and I've not been here since then. And I'm just I'm just excited to see that my so, um, yeah. Um, so um let me let me go back to answering the question so that I can so that I can hand over to Dr. Sam to I can hand over to Dr. Sam to um to take the um the the slides. After that we'll now have like um we'll now take further questions again and then we'll round up the class. So yeah, you have answered Dr. Um, Akubo's own of um lining with tapolin. Um, let me see what's the next question now. Um, could you please explain how we can avoid bitter taste in wait, could you please, thank you, thank you, Ma. Could we please explain how we can avoid bitter taste in smoked fish? Yes, soak your fishes in salt water before you smoke them. So after cleaning the fishes, degutting them, just before you put them inside the oven, 
put do salt water brine they call it brine solution and leave them in it for like 30 minutes what would be the quantity of salt used before smoking use before smoking that means to kill the fishes plenty i've not it's not I've, I've never had to measure it. I, I told you, it's not salt of 50 naira you will buy. Or it's bag of salt, like 50 kg bag of salt you will buy. All right? So it's that bag of salt. You just you use like three bowls or four bowls. Plenty. Absurdly plenty. You know, it's not, it's not a hand. So that's that. Uh -huh. Then the next question, what's the process of constructing an oven? It's like asking somebody what's the process of building a house. It's really not your job. So you don't, you don't, it's not something you should want. It's not something you should do because the ovens need to be padded. They need to be able to insulate, is it insulate, they call it or whatever, to keep the heat, retain heat. So just leave it for the professionals. You, you want to go and build your, you know, it's like saying it was the process to build a car. The cost for you to build your one oven, eh? You know, it's like saying you want to build your own house, your car now. Will you start going to make uh, iron fabrication and all those kind of purposes? So just buy an oven, please. Um, so what are the disadvantages of earth import? I think I've highlighted some of them. As much as it is almost the best natural environment for your fishes. Um, number one, um, you if it's not your land, you cannot devalue somebody's land like that. You can't build a earthing pond on somebody's land and pack all the sand and do what it will not allow. Number two, if you are sending your fishes to like pepper soup joints and stuff, they will need maybe like 50 fishes or 100 fishes in a day, maybe like weekend for the weekend, you know, jollification and all of that. I know what the pepper soup drinkers, I, uh, who looks like a pepper soup drinker. So uh, <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. So um, 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 so you, you cannot drain the old 18 ponds, just pack out 100 fishes. Meanwhile, if it's a concrete pond or a mobile pond, I mean, you just reduce the water, catch the fishes, and fill it back up like that. But for an 18 pond, you can't do that. So most times when you are doing an 18 pond, it's one day at best. One day at best. You just know that that day will drain all the water. And it takes like maybe one or two days to actually drain the water in an 18 pond. You can imagine. So um, with surface pump, mud pump. So you just, so that day, you just know that, okay, well, we are selling all the fishes, you know, etc. 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 So can an oven can an oven be permanently fixed at the spot or can it be mobile? It can be mobile. It's it's mobile, but you know, um, it's not something you can just put inside your car and be driving. It's big, all right. It's big. It's like maybe I think the last one we constructed was like seven feet height, three feet depth, three feet uh, wideness, and like four feet long. So it's not something you could be moving about. And it's quite heavy too. So most times, once you drop it somewhere, it man, that's where it will stay. You know, but if you are moving from another place to another place, I mean, you move it. There's nothing. There's no nothing attached to it. It's just a unit. It's just a unit. Mm -hmm. Think of it like a like a a big freezer. All those big freezers. And that's exactly how it is. Also, all those big tall freezers. That's exactly how it is. Also. So, what's the price of an oven that can smoke 500 fishes at a time? So now it's not so much the number of fishes as the kg of the fishes. So you can write down now. The 100 kg oven is 200,000. 100 kg oven. So it's the, that's, it will take 100 kg of fishes. So it's not so much the number. For instance, now these 500 fishes, if the fishes are 100 grams, that's just 50 kg. You know, because the rack that will, you saw the racks, I showed you videos of that. So the rack that you put in. So, sorry, let me get water or something. Give me three minutes. I want to get water to drink. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's it's good that you know that because um, you're going to be buying if you want to just engage yourself in just smoking the fish and selling. If you have created the market, if that is your core value chain. You just have to know that so that we can buy so so number of kg. I'm going to smoke it so you know it from the beginning. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Sam. So, um, um, I said the 100 kg oven is 200,000, the 200 kg oven is 300,000. I would not advise so for a commercial farm if you know you really want to go into this, that 100 kg oven. Okay? That 200 kg of which is 300k, you will um, use, um, it's almost the same material we use for it, 
So, uh, so I would advise people to just pick the 200 kg oven, all right, depending on the, you know, the scale of the farm, all right, because you don't want to, as I said, it takes like two or three days to smoke a batch, a batch of fish. And it's the same coal that you put inside to maintain if you used 100 kg inside that 200 kg oven. It's the same coal that you use if you use 200, if you use the oven to the full capacity. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So you want to get something big so that you can just load it up and know that you are being economical with your, with your, you know, with your resources. So, um, but of course, that 300 kg does not include transport. Though. So you can imagine, um, you can imagine. Um, so those are because when you are writing your business plan, we want to make sure that you know you factor in all of these things because it's not like you do one finish in a banner and then you cannot carry to to put them. So that might be that's something you should consider. Um, then I, I give you prices for the smoke. You can always ask for prices for stuff so that I can I can supply and uh, that so that you can write it in your uh, my internet connection is slightly shaky, so that you can write it in your plan. All right, but um, yeah. So I think I've answered all the questions. I can't see another question here. Water seal cement is not also reliable. Okay, because um, Doctor Sam asked that water seal. Now have I taught water seal? So you can imagine somebody that has used it and and is telling you that. So yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Um, I hope we've used videos to show you the full cycle of fish, of the fish. So I'm going to hand over to Dr. Sam now. He will just speak over the slides as well. And then we'll just, all of us will just come together for um, the final questions as we round over the class. So if you want, if you have questions as we have facts and figures, figures that, okay, how much will this cost me? What's all those things? You can ask him now at the end of this class. All right, um, this mobile pond, how much will it cost me? How do I set it up? What's the most economical way to set it up in Abuja or something like that? You can ask him at the end of this class. So I'll just stop sharing my screen now so that Dr. Sam can take over from there. I think we have just one more, we have like one hour, 20 minutes to run on this class. We've started the class seven o'clock this morning. And um, so Dr. Sam will do that. Then we'll take questions and that will be a great. So I think at the end of the slides, we have the part of asking questions of, um, of, of we have the part of asking questions. Dr. Hello, uh, uh, one participant who has a question is raising his hand. Okay, please ask ask yeah. a question, Doctor. Uh, I'm coming. Okay, let me let me unmute him. Okay. Uh, please unmute your mic and go ahead with your question, Mister Adioju. Unmute your mic from your laptop from your screen. There is a place. If you look at the left, yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. Now yes. you can talk. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, Mr. Samuel, please go ahead with your question. We can hear you now. No, I think his network has frozen. Mm, that's Isn't one it? that yes. I did. Uh, I do last time it did. I don't know the particular, the particular um, chemical that I will take to the so you're going to have to repeat the questions because your network shows that we couldn't hear you. Uh, I think his network is out. I, I can't I find so. him. Mute him and let him type can type the question. Let Mute him, him. Let him type the question. So over to you, Dr. Sam. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, yeah. for listening. I hope we've used video to explain everything. So we'll just go through the slide. Yes, yeah, the wrong offline. When it will do that, sir. Okay. Um, I want to uh, appreciate my colleague here. Uh, you all agree with me that he has done an excellent job. Um, it's not just uh, what I'll be doing very briefly, uh, taking you through a bit of a theoretical framework of value chain. He has done the practical aspect of the value chain and showed you from uh, experiences, you know, of what the entire value chain of uh, aquaculture, you know, so you've seen it practically. And like I said yesterday, pictures, uh, just one picture can speak a thousand words, you know, and I know that you have seen everything. It, and 
you cannot get it more than that, you know. Um, so, but I will just show you some few uh, theoretical framework. I've actually done a, a, written a, a work on the value chain generally, you know, of agriculture. When my director asked me to do, uh, come up with a document on value chain, okay? So I did a document on value chain entirely, but you've gotten the practical that you need. You know, I will just run through the document and probably let you have it so that it can, you can boost your, 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 you can be part of your resource. But I want to guarantee that all you need is what you have seen. You know, all you need is what you have seen. You know, and like we mentioned before, the choice is now yours. What is important is that try and make sure that you zero into a particular aspect of the value chain and take advantage of it right away. Okay, just know which of the value chain can I better plug myself into. And you've been advised not to start from brew stock. Don't start also from uh, uh, fingerling or juvenile production. Don't go there because it is a very delicate uh, aspect of you know, uh, the value chain. We've been advised. And if you ask me, if you're a beginner, I know he will also confirm that you don't even need to start from fingerlings, okay? Yes, don't start from fingerling at all. You know, you let expert do fingerlings. Yes. All you need to do is go right away and start from grow out the juve, the mature juvenile. They have survived the critical stage of their development. And from that time, you can, you know, if you have, uh, for a starter, if that's your first batch, you know, we will advise that they, they, you pay for it. However, you will be better for you. You pay for it, you know, they will select for you juvenile of the same size. Of course, they're going to grow in different sizes later, but we advise that you go for that and pay for it. If that will cost you more to to, to a naira more, if that one, you know I mean, if that one is sold for, how much is juvenile now, Dr. Akin? Juvenile is how much now, sir? Akin Fish, are you there? No, he's he's okay. He's still he's still online, yeah, but I don't yeah. know if you can hear. Him. Yes. So, anyway, he, yes, I think it's about. 15 naira thereabouts. If you are going to pay a 17 naira, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The host muted me. I was I was here. But oh, sorry. <laughs> I was know, trying to unmute you. Um, yeah. So um, juvenile is between 20 to 25 naira, depending on the size where you are about to buy it. Thank you. So if I'm going to pay 40 to 50 naira to have post juvenile, okay, I think. Uh, you will agree with me. Let's just unmute him so that I can engage him. Just unmute him permanently. Unmute Akin. So anyway, so that is it. I, I, I strongly advise that, you know, you post juvenile will be okay for you, you know, so that you can manage it properly because the management of fingerlings can be challenging if you are a novice, if you are just new into that industry. You know, so it's very so they can start from even if they can't start feeding them from you know uh, from two mm before within one month you can proceed to your three mm and four mm you know subsequently. So it, I advise that you do that. So the key point, thing I'm emphasizing is that know the aspect of the value chain you want to be involved in and zero into it. I will just show you the theoretical framework of what's is the value chain we have been mentioning since. We've been talking about value chain and value change, you know, since morning. And it's good that you have a background knowledge of what it entails. So it's critical that you know that a value is anything, you know, that 
has positive effect on the quality of a person. Okay, it's of value. So I want to add value to my fish. Okay, so you can add value to a person, a family, a community, and a nation. So that's a value. Value addition is another concept that you must know. Creating or adding value, you know, that increase, you know, the profit margin of a thing. That's value addition. You know, like we said, he mentioned yesterday that you can have 20%, you know, gain if you add value to that fish, you know, rather than just telling about this. An advantage of it, there's an advantage to allow your fish to just go and compromise that 20%. But a time when you cannot afford to compromise the 20%, uh, because you want to add value to it to have, you know, a reasonable uh, profit uh, uh, margin, okay? So a value chain is the set of activities, you know, different actors play to deliver valuable product or service. Very important because I want to deliver valuable, you know, products. And so I add value to, you know, to my, to my, to my products. Dr. Sam, sorry to cut you. I think Christy is raising up her hand for a okay. question. So maybe we should unmute her and let's hear. Her. Christy, okay. Yes, let Christy talk now if she can. If you unmute her, the moderator can unmute her. Okay, I'm coming. Let me get her. Okay. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. The question I wanted to ask is um, when you are talking about fingerlings and their feeding, I want to find that because there are people that use um, uh, drum poultry. They use the feces of, of their birds as a uh, food or feed for the fingerlings. What, what do you have to say about that? Well, in, in, I will allow King, a King to say something, but let me just say this. We've said before now that garbage in, garbage out. We want to be sure that the nutritional content of even what you are talking about um, is very rich. Then the system you are also using, is it earthen pond? Is it concrete tank? Will it lead to the pollution of that water? You know, the negative effect of that poultry waste is another thing entirely. If it's a flowing, rich earthen pond, you know, you can even try that. Because in my farm, for example, you know, because it's a river, I channel big river into my pond with different pipes connected into it. You know, I also build, you know, a poultry on top of it. It's says experimental. Okay, I did an experiment, you know, but that is not their source of feed principally. Okay, even with fingerling, it's, they, are, they are very delicate. You cannot afford to feed them with that kind of uh, food. You can't afford it. You will kill them and the survival rates will drop 60%. Akin, what do you have to say from your experience? Yes, I agree, um, Dr. S Dr. Sam. You've answered the question beautifully, actually. And the thing is that garbage in, garbage out. See, for business, if I'm just playing at the back of my house, I can feed my fish Gary. I can feed my fish anything I want to feed them. But if I'm collecting loan, eh, there must be, there, you know, that money is a legal tender. It's, it's cash, you know, so it's not time for me to play or risk, all right? So I would not do that. You will hear people tell you they feed their fishes maggots. Hmm? Mm -hmm. If I throw the feed, the maggot into the water, the fish will eat it. Mm -hmm. Did it translate to growth? The FCR of maggots, eh? The, I've seen it, I've tested it, is like nine to one. Mm -hmm. Nine to one. Meaning that I must feed the fish nine kg of maggots for them to get me one kg of their oh, weight. Mm -hmm. So... Let me, so when they say, ah, we will buy maggot for you, 150 naira per kg, it looks cheaper than your fish feed, which is like 450 naira per kg. But when you times that 150 naira times nine, 
Mm. That's like 1,200 for your fish to have that commensurate growth. That's why I've been hammering on FCR from the beginning. So you throw the maggot and the fish rush it. In fact, you are happy. You feel, ah, they are eating it. It's nice. It's doing this. But it's not translated to business for you. It's not translated to profit for you. Yeah. So, yes, um, the people that feed fingerling, they are, they are fingerlings with whatever they feed it with. Ah, let them continue. But you will discover that it's not economically viable for a business. So yeah. I, I think I've answered your question. Thank you. Yeah. So it's, it's very, very clear. Um, it's, you, you, you have an expected end in mind. You have a time in mind. And you, don't, you just have to be able to, you know, to feed them right and get the results. You know, that's the between uh, the way we even feed our children. You know, if you feed them with pap alone, they, will, they become kwashokot. Okay? But if you feed them with the right meal and all of that, you will see their chubby chic like that of Chris. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so uh, let's just continue and just run you through the theoretical framework of what it is the value chain so a lot of players come into the value chain to play like we said let's emphasize it over and over locate your own value chain and stay on it make the best of it you can combine you know all of them together okay, like he is doing right now and that's not where, where he started from, okay? But one step at a time. Yes, thank you, sir. You know, one step at a time. Don't combine all the value chain, every, doing everything at the same time. You may not have to, even if, it's, if your own is just marketing, go to his farm, collect, add 50 naira. You know, you've started already. Before very, you can very, very true. Sorry, yes. sorry to put you short, sir. Let me not right. even have that. I'm in partnership with many people, all right? So you see me doing Asha Ponds, uh, my growth farm, my fish farm. Do you think I'm physically present everywhere? I'm not, all right? So I'm in partnership with many people. Some of my arteries, we just have a contract that, oh, I'll always buy your fishes there. I'm not the one particularly joining the fishes, doing that. You saw the videos of me doing them in different places, true. But I'm not, so I'm not, now I'm now more of a manager of the company, of the fish company. And as I've told you, I'm 10 years into this thing. You are just starting. You know, you can't compare. So I just wanted to butcher what Dr. Sam said, that you can't put your hand in many pies. Pick mm -hmm. one place, you focus mm -hmm. on it and continue. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Please continue. Thank you. Sam. So uh, looking at the uh, valuation is very critical and very important. You know, it helps you to generate your high profits. Okay, if you stay in your lane and you locate your own aspect, your, where you want to act in the entire valuation, you're able to generate a very high profit. You must know that. And uh, you are able to get the information you required about the finances. Okay? So, evaluation can also tell you how much do I need in, so if I want to just do brew stock alone. But you can be sure that, you know, you can't just plug yourself into brew stock overnight. We've said it over and over. But what does it take to even establish that one? Okay? So the financial flow in each of those value chain must be put into consideration, okay? And value chain also help you to discover something. What is your own competitive advantage? Okay? And that is where I want to zero into. Where can I compete favorably? And that's why when we're teaching you in the previous lectures, we're looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunity, and your the threats. So what is your own opportunity and where is your own strength? So that when I know my strength, if I'm a very good marketer, why am I going into production? Okay. So, and of course, you know that the, the finances required to plug into all of that valuation, it's, it's critical as well. So it's happy to understand the overall trend in the industry. That's the usefulness of the valuation. What is the under Like we've showed it to you, from all of those videos, okay? What is the trend, you know? And how can I leverage, how can I use those trends to leverage myself? You know, the, looking at the technical intervention, you were asking questions on the construction of the pond, the construction of the, uh, of, of the, of the processing unit and all of that. So it helps you. You also understand it's structures and functioning. The structure you have 
in your uh, in production is different from the structure you are going to have in processing. Fingerling production has its own structure. Juvenile management has its own you know similar structures. So it helps you to understand all of the structures and their relationship and the governance within the same you know uh, value chain. You know so. These are the things, and of course, like I mentioned before, the cost that is associated with each of them. If you cannot handle, you know, a, a particular segment of the value chain, why not try the other? And of course, the operations also, you know, differ. I mentioned before, you know, the information you require. So there are many things to, you know, uh, to, to to the value chain. Now, I have about three steps if I want to know how do I locate my own value chain? Where can I fit in? You don't just double into it like that. Number one, you must do what we call activity analysis. What is important for you to know is that you must know where is the gap in a particular you know, uh, value chain, and where lie my competence, okay? You can't, um, if you don't have competence in a particular value chain, please don't double into it. Do what we call a brainstorming activity. We said, there's nothing that is meant for lazy man. You need a team to sit down, identify what is the, you know, what is the customer experience? You know, we are told in previous class that you don't discuss with somebody who is not a customer, who is not a stakeholder. You know, if you engage, like we've engaged the Aki Fish, to, I mean, these last three days, you will know that if you brainstorm with him, you know, you will know where, you know, to plug in accurately. You know, so you are able to know, you have a team where you can brainstorm and look at all the in details, what do I require in this part, in all the various value chain, okay? Then you look at the value factors. Write down what is needed to be done. Don't keep them in your head, please. Write them what is, 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 is required to be done to provide that great value for each of the value factor. You know, that's why you must have a book where you write everything that you need. I'm sure that, you know, if you ask the uh, Akin Fisher, he will, can tell you practically everything to the needle you need, to the bows you need, to the net you need, to the scale you need, you know, and of course, this, uh, this uh, loan you're about to collect, you know, we demand that you spelt out in detail everything you need for that particular valuation. Of course, like you are told, they will supply all of those items to you. Okay, they will supply. If you are looking for, uh, if you are asking for a loan for processing, they will give. They will provide you with that. That's a processing cane. Everything that can serve your purpose. So it's very important. Of course, very important. We've told you several times. You evaluate changes and plan for action. Don't stick to one when it's not working. Change, change is a constant thing that must uh, you must embrace if you are going to make headway, you know, uh, in your own value chain and all that. So there's a lot of benefit to it, you know, benefit to uh, sticking to your own value chain. I explain it here. I won't go into that. How to improve the value chain? Identify the activity that is useful. Improve the brand reputation. You know, you have to improve. You have to, you know. If you, you, if you watched those videos very well, you will see uh, Akin Fish enjoying the process. Even the way he enjoy and dance with the fish, you know, you know, can, even the fish are, re are rejoicing along with him. And he's rejoicing with the fish. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and all that. So it's very important that you just, you know, uh, you, you do that. So improve, improve your customer satisfaction, increase your productivity, reduce your costs. You know, that's how to improve your value chain. 
reduce your costs. It's not fancy. You know, you're not there for show. You know, like we said again, look, at, look critically at your, your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats. Mm -hmm. And, you know, improve on your weaknesses, take advantage of your opportunities and your threats, put it in perspective and avoid it if you can. So also, I told you about the, you know, the value chain. We have the vertical dimension. We have the horizontal dimension. We don't have time to go into that. If you look at this material, I explained that the advantage of each of them, there is advantage to it as well. Depending on which one you want to plug yourself into, you don't have time to do all of that. You know, so this, this material is quite very rich. Um, so I will just quickly go through straight to this. I, I, I gave the background and agricultural value chain, linking the farmer to the market. You can take advantage of that. How that, you know, like the assignment we gave you yesterday, we'll come back to it. Okay. I'm sure you'll have done your assignments, you know, locating the markets and the contact person. You know, you can do, you know, uh, um, 200, you know, uh, potential people that can buy your fish. You know, go and do your marketing. You can even employ someone to go and, you know, uh, take a survey of the entire, your, your, your market where you want to sell your products. So we'll come back, to, please don't forget, moderator, we're going to ask for, in fact, you yourself, you're supposed to give us your response also. So um, there are many activities that are involved. I didn't want to go to agricultural evolution. I am just quickly move to aquaculture evolution. We've shared that with you uh, through video. We'll share that with you already. Yes, okay. Um, I brought this uh, picture out to show you, you know, uh, the different value chain that is available. You know, uh, financing, sustainability, and government. This one is more practical. So there are many things to it. Let me just go click. Okay, good. This is a typical agricultural value chain. We have production, harvesting, primary producer, the secondary, the distribution, and the wholesale retail markets. There are many things that are involved in value chain. Okay. Uh, let me just quickly go to, this is aquaculture. We've been, we've shown you this one. Okay. Uh, uh, he told you that you can actually, maybe that's not, that's opportunity anybody will look at, you know, ordinary when say fish farm, you know, everybody just think fish and selling. But there are people that just go into feed manufacturing. I'm not sure you have considered it, you know. And of course, since you know that, you know, feed constitutes 70 percent of farm operation costs, you know it. Probably even 75, because after you have put your feed costs into a proper perspective and it's well constructed. Fortunately, we have the mobile pond now. You know, feed will constitute about 80 percent of the farm operation costs. So people who are smart, you know, very smart, and have the fund go into fish feed manufacturing. Yes, sir. Yes, so, and if you if you if you do it properly, and you your 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 your, your, your numbers are correct, you know, everybody will come looking out for you. Like he has said, Olam, they have make it big, and they have, you know, they have weathered it, and they are there to stay. The second activity that you can consider, which we advise beginners not to venture into, is the hatchery. It's another value chain that you can explore. You know, you can explore, you know, and you can explore it if you go for the training and you pay for it, okay? You can explore it and create your market as well. So that means that the entire Lagos says you map it, okay, and go for a field survey of all the poultry, I mean, sorry, the farms you have across the states. You have your, your data, you know, and you're able to sacrifice 40, 40, 40, or 50, 50 of your, of your fingerlings or your juvenile for them to try it out. You're breaking the market, okay? You want them to just give them 500. Just try it in your pond. If you have the result, come back. If you don't have the result, don't come back again. You are breaking to the market, you know, but that takes time. You can get, you can plug yourself into it around that way. So racing, you know, the fish, you've been told, you've been, 
extensively you've shown the videos of all of them either in small scale the medium scale the large scale but you, you we always advise that you have pond of different you know of different sizes you know that can accommodate you know your your the, the number of fishes you want to stock you know um like uh, my colleague was sharing with us how that you know acting pond can be cumbersome but if you manage it very well and you have a good source of water, you know, it's, I mean, the growth rate there is always very, very, very good. So what I advise is that if you have artin pond, you can also harvest your artin pond when they reach a particular stage and put them in your various concrete tank, acclimatize them and begin to sell them in patches. It's a very good way of, uh, I, know, I don't know whether he has done it before and uh, you can testify to it that the growth rate in Atin Pond is always very, very encouraging. I've experimented, you know, it before, you know, and uh, I found it very, I mean, the growth rate very interesting. I can always harvest them at a particular point and divide them into different ponds, you know, waiting for me to sell. But he has given us, you know, greater wisdom in, uh, uh, in approaching our customers one week or two weeks before they get to full maturity so that you do not just come and take advantage of your stock, you know, and, and reap it. And uh, other aspects that you can consider is what the fishmonger does. Just be involved in the logistic, okay? You know, just being for you have a, you have a, where you keep those fishes and you have where you can distribute them to all the hotels and all that. So that's another aspect also. Then we also have for you the marketing aspect of it as well. It's not just the logistics, but the marketing aspect of it, where you smoke it and you market it, either live or smoked. You have to know your distribution channels are very important. The urban market, the rural retail market. He has shared with us his experience, how that when you know that the fishmongers are going to take advantage of you fully, what do you do? What has he done? He said the malams are there. Okay? Those who you can take them to the churches and... You know, he, he has given us a lot of wisdom, you know, for strategic wisdom. But on a sustainable level, you must create your own market, you know, and uh, of course, your product will speak for you, your experience and your integrity will now speak for you subsequently. Of course, you must know that your customers, you must know your customer. 90% of fish, farm fish is consumed within this country. Okay. Yes, he has had a, you know, a breakthrough in. To, uh, to take your fish after the shore of the country. But I can guarantee you, from the research, 90% is still being consumed within this country. And of course, uh, like uh, one of our participants said, you know, if you go to the fish market, you will get it at a very high price. And at the same time, okay, you may not even find it in a particular time. So the opportunity there abounds and... Uh, I like us to, you know, take advantage of uh, any of the, uh, any of the, of the, of the, of, 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 of the segments of the value chain. Uh, also, we are supposed to take you through simulation. He has done that practically. You know, I will bore you going into how do you simulate. You get your, you define your problem. You plan the projects. He has done all of that came up with a model, he has shown you the model of construction, the model, all of that, you know, the theoretical framework I have, you know, he has done all of that in a uh, picture. So it's very important that uh, we run it up here, you know, setting the objective, preliminary modeling, you have to do all of that data collection, you know, you are getting it free of charge from him more than uh, we expect from him. And of course, experimentation. He has gone through, he has done the experiments, he has proven it, it's working and producing results. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just do what you've been taught here, and you can be sure that um, you will make success of your, your endeavor and uh, you will have uh, uh, results uh, from everything that you set your hand to do. So, we want to um, uh, thank every one of you for, for participating. Um, 
we will now uh, come to the time where we ask, are you to ask your question. You know, you say, is there any advantage of buying, buying fish feed, like one ton of feed directly from the manufacturer? I will let my colleague answer this question from experience. He has said many things about feed before. You know, I don't know if you heard it. Maybe you need to go and visit the videos uh, that has been recorded. You know, um, uh, I always say that, you know, it's always good to, to see the end from the beginning. I can't overemphasize it. From day one, you must know how many uh, kg of 2 mm do I require? How many kg of 3 mm, 4 mm, and grow up? How many do I require? You know, and what is the cost of each of them? And then, then which of the uh, feed or manufacturer do I, is recommended to me by my consultant? Because if you have not tried a particular feed before and you venture into it, you are going to crash. So it's always good to ask people who are in the field, who have tried a particular brand before, you know, to advise you accurately. If you just go and pick up, if you know, you say, oh, this is a manufacturer, there are many of them there, just like they are fake everything. There are fake feed out there, you know. So if you double into what has not been proven, you will not be happy with your investments. Um, so I don't know if you have anything to say with respect to that question. Uh, yeah, then, of course, yes. Thank you, doctor. Um, yeah, so um, maybe the feed companies directly might not be able to give a discount because they, they, they have registered distributors. However, if you can walk up to any feed store and speak to the owner of the store, Gongo, I'm sure it can give you a discount. Maybe not, if you are thinking you buy the bike, maybe you buy a bag like 6.5. Maybe you get it for him like 6.450 or 6.4. So don't think that you get a 10% discount or something as large. No, 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 no. I'm, I have a feed store. Eh? Let me show you. I have a feed store. I have a store where I, where, you know, I have a store. I have a store, the feed place. The feed place in Ibadan is owned by me, all right? And I know that, I know the margins we put on the bags of feed. Do you understand? So it's maybe 100 Naira from the company price that we get it. So if you walk up to me now and say you want to buy one ton, maybe I'll remove like 15 Naira for you. But it's nothing large that you think that, uh, okay. But if you go to the company, they will give you at the price that I'm selling it to you because you are just a one person who walks up to them. Do you get it? So yeah, that's that. Over to you, Dr. Sam. Yes, um, we did ask you to uh, come up with your answer to the question that was asked yesterday. Um, so can you please unmute uh, uh, one, day, one, of, one at a time uh, starting from yourself, uh, our deputy registrar. Deputy registrar. Okay. Yes, sir. Have you done your um, Yes, I was able to find out the price of uh, three mm yesterday. We want to see you. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let me put the video on. Okay. So I was able to find out the price of um, fifteen. I mean, three mm yesterday. The 15 kg is being sold here in Bauchi because I'm in Bauchi currently. It's being sold in Bauchi at 11,000 naira. That's the 15 kg. So we don't have so many. Which feed? 3 mm of um, um, the fish feed, 15 kg. What's the name of the feed? It's uh, it's foreign. I didn't forget. I didn't remember to ask the name. Uh, sorry. And in Bauchi, we have limited places where they sell the the feed because. Sometimes if they don't have here, they have to go to the neighbor, neighboring state just to get the feed. So we don't have a lot of vendors selling the fish um, feed. So I had limited places to go and check. For the 2mm, I didn't get the price. Okay. Uh, some shops were already closing around that time. So this is what he had and that's what he, that's the price we he made. We have a lot of fish farms in Baoshi, a lot of fish farms. Not that much, but uh, now I, I discovered that some people are doing little, little fish ponds in their houses. Like me too, that's yeah. what I want to start. That, that was why I asked yesterday. I said, um, like what, I asked the question, like what size would be, what number would be good for somebody who's starting? 
that's because I want to start something small inside the house, something I can manage. And then, like, it's an experiment so that I'll have an idea of how to do the fish farm, then maybe I can do a large scale later. So uh, that's one of the things. But then we have people that have bigger um, uh, farms, but they it's like they buy their products from outside the state. Like I said, not many people are selling the feeds here. I ask that question so because that could be that could be an area you can also look out for. You know, if there are no okay. many people who are doing the selling feed, feeds, who are selling the feed. yes. So okay. it's a, it's a, yes, you can leverage on that. You know, along with your experimental uh, production process. Um, yes, sir. Okay. What do you have to say about that? I think I'll, I'll consider that. That is a good. Uh, you just spoke about value chain. I can look at that one and add value to my uh, business. So I'll, 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 I'll work on it, sir. I'll okay. do some more findings based on the questions you asked and based on what I can fish asked me to. I can, I, I can work on it and uh, figure out something and start something to add value to my business. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Casey. Okay, let me unmute her. Unmute him, yes. I'm unmute mute him, him, sorry. So, Casey, please go ahead and unmute your, your device. And put your video on, please. Mute, okay. Can you see me? Uh, not That's yet. It. Okay. okay. Now we can see. Can you see me now? Yes. Yes. Um, I got for for Blue Crown. 2 mm is 6.3. 3 mm is uh, 5.850. Uh, 4 mm the same price. And then uh, 6 mm for Blue Crown is 5.6. And then for Aqualis, 2 mm is 7.4. 3 mm is 6, 7, some places 6, uh, 8, and then 4 to 6, the same price. And then Echo Feed, they have just 3, 4, and 6. 3 is going for 4, 5. The 4 is going for 4, 4, 50. And then the 6 is going for 4, 3, 50. Okay, in the same place or different places? Yeah, in the market, differences of just 15 Naira, 20 Naira here and there. That's between um, uh, the market in, uh, in uh, duty and then the fish market itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, then I think we asked a question with respect to where fish is being sold, you know, creating market for yourself. I don't know. Yes. Um, fish now goes for, I asked, um, there's somebody I used to put stock fish grow out. The three people I, that used to come and take from me, now they get it between six to 650 depending on your stock, how good your stock is. And sometimes they even drop it as low as 550 for you. It depends on your sizes anyway. The bigger your fish, the more they pay. The smaller it is, no matter how many kg you are giving them, even if it's 1,000 kg, they try to beat down the price per kg because the sizes are not that big. Okay, thank you very much. Can you please mute him and uh, unmute uh, uh, General Kubo? Okay. Okay, General, over to you. All right. Uh, hello, good morning. 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 Uh, thank you very much. I'm so sorry for coming late. Uh, I want to get late. So I I was able to go the, the, the area where I went to in Kuji, because I reside in Kuji, uh, I went to the major dealer who did the scratching, the scratching fish feed. 
two mm goes for eleven thousand naira. Two mm eleven thousand naira. Three mm of scratching is ten thousand five hundred naira. Ten thousand five hundred naira for three mm, and for four mm it is five thousand seven hundred. Six mm the same price five thousand seven hundred, and eight. Yes, that's the price. So I tried to get the price of Olam in the same in Kujie also, but the the distributor was not around. The shop was locked, so I was able to get only for for scratching. Okay. And and on the on the market on the market because my intention. Hello, sir. Are you with me, sir? Very well. Yes. On the market, my intention is to go into stocking, processing, and yeah, yeah that's what I say. Process. I mean, smoking it and selling it to the to the cost to, to to the final consumers. And the place I have in mind is like the National Open Resources Nigeria headquarters here in Abuja, based on my relationship with most of my colleagues. Um, I think it's a it's a good market for me. Also, where I stay in Kuji, there is a big school, a school, a school of international standard, a, a capital science academy. And this is a school where we have uh, children from where to do homes, prominent personalities in Abuja, and I'm targeting their PTA or visiting days. On their PTA day or visiting days, just to get the canopy, showcase my products, and if possible, I'll cut on it, put it in a carton, and I will, I will get a very good brush, brush it, get Ururu, and sprinkle it on it to make, to, to make it glitter, and send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's also, the right way. That's, that's the right way to do it. Okay, continue, continue, sir. I'm listening. Okay. There is, there is a place I've been in, in Lube, if you are going to Federal, uh, if you are going to uh, trade more within Nigeria is a strategic area where you see some 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 dealers will put crates of eggs in the boot of their cars, open it, and they sell it at a very very good price. And I'm targeting that that junction also exactly. so that if I can just be there, open it for a start. I will make the fish look cheaper yes. with my labor. What they are selling two thousand, I will sell it to one five. By the time I get the market, I now go back to the status quo. Thank you very Wonderful. much, sir. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That's that was beautiful. I like that. Okay, next. Let me let me hear everybody before I speak. Um, okay. Can you please unmute uh, Samuel Kenyinde? Okay. Mr. Samuel, please go ahead. Unmute from your, your, your end. Unmute your device. Okay. Uh, good morning. Please, um, there's a point that I did at Jabu here, but I have finished the block point. I have finished the, the whole thing, do the plaster. I want to know the type of uh, chemical that I'll take to kill the cement before I put the water, put the, the fish. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, um, as regards treating your concrete ponds, since it's concrete pond, you don't yes. need to put a chemical into the pond again. Just fill it to the brim with water. And what some people do is that they put banana leaves inside. All right, Fine. banana leaves or poultry dung. If you put poultry dung, if you tie it inside a, a sack and put it inside, what you're actually doing is what we call denaturing the pond. <laughs> So, but if you just put water inside and leave it like that for like two weeks or three weeks, hmm, you will see that mosquito lava will start growing inside. You know, the moment you can see living thing inside the water, you are fine. So you don't need to put any chemical. You just want to make sure that something can live inside the water. So if you pump water inside it and leave it for three weeks, eh, you will see that mosquito will start, all these ants, that is, all these flies will be on it, all those kind of things, then it's fine. Alternatively, to make the process faster, instead of the three weeks, you can cut banana leaves, plantain leaves, and put it inside, or put Thai poultry waste inside sack, 
and drop it inside. You don't need any chemical. Yep. So next. Easy. Oh, we are taking, I think we have done Benson now. Jesse. Okay. Oh, yes. Benson. They are, they Please unmute yourself, Mr. Benson. Benson. Yes, this is what we are listening for. Okay. Yeah. Good, good morning, Sas. Good morning. Yes. I, in fact, I reside here in, uh, in uh, Abuja, precisely in Dusi. Um, what I did is, uh, in fact, I intend because I, I went to inspect a place in Buari. Please, we can't see your face, Mr. Benison. Uh, we can't see you. Okay, let me, my, I'm using a phone, and then the, the, the front camera is not good, it's bad. But, okay. yes, that's just the problem. Okay, okay let me try and see. Okay, yeah, we can see you now. We can see you now, but something is happening to your audio. Your audio. Sorry, we can't hear you. Please unmute your device. We can't hear you. Okay, we can hear you now, but it's cracking. Okay, sorry. I, I think um, my... So what happened is, uh, I, when I got there, I tried to confirm because I, I discovered that uh, there's one fit to produce in just called vital fit is very important and it's good. They are found in the right boat in, um, in, um, in poultry and the uh, fish is good. So they said they have two of them. For six thousand three hundred, and um, they also have three mm. Mm. His audio is poor, sir. Do we ask him to to, to present his own later on? I think you should type in his, his uh, response. You should okay, type let in me, his response. Let me, let me chat. Let me send him that chat. Uh, uh, now mute him and send him a uh, text. They have. And then for... Okay, I've sent him a message. So I'll put him on mute. I've done that, sir. Okay. So, um, over to you, um, I can fish. We've heard all of them, and uh, I can fish. Are you there? Okay, so it is out for now. Well, that's a, a, a job well done. It's a step in the right direction to know, you know, 
where to get your feed. And also, the one question we did not ask you is, where can I get my, my fish? Okay, if you want to stock, where can I get a credible uh, uh, juvenile or fingerling from? Where do I need to get that? You know, if you, if you don't have one, you know, thank God we have somebody who has a proven record, a person of integrity who can supply you, you know, uh, along with those who you supply in all of those areas. You can take advantage of that. Then also um, the smoking aspect of it, we were talking about the, 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 the uh, the, the question we asked you is the marketing and the feed. The fish itself, you know, we didn't ask questions. So you have done very well. Um, so if, once you get that right, you can be sure that you will make, uh, uh, you will make headway in the world of fisheries. So um, um, that's all I have to say to your responses that you have uh, uh, provided at the moment. So he's back right now. As we begin to round up, um, the other things with respect to management, uh, maybe on, maybe on uh, privately, you may, you may have his number if you want further consultancy, you know, with respect to what you do. Uh, so you may need to take his number. Our number is in, the, in, the, in our websites. You know, he is in full-time fish business, so you can engage him with respect to your construction and remote management of your fish. And I know that as a participant and a student, he will gladly want to mentor you. And if you have questions, anyone I don't know, I will get in touch with him also because he's in the field to help you uh, start when you start making the money we increase he will likely increase his consultancy and even by then yes i know that he will actually will have to increase it and of course it's always good to plow back to people who have helped you to grow if you don't even place a demand on you you can say oh this is somebody that has taught me the way let me reach back you know to him recommend him as well to other fish farmers that's another way you can help promote his own business as well so that um, what you what you have received today, he also can be beneficiaries of the investment he has put in your life as well. So uh, there are many other things that uh, we would like to communicate to you on request, like the invoice. He has uh, magnanimously said you will help us with it, so that you can be able to fill in the details, you know, make accurate projections that can help you in real life you know so uh probably uh, you can get in touch with me while i reach out to him so that uh, you will not uh, bombard him i don't know uh, uh differently we want to be able to handle things you know as an organization not you know but at a particular point in time we will gladly you know uh, you will engage him with a cost anyway you know and uh, he will be glad to be of assistance. I know I'm speaking for him. So, yes, in, so, um, so it's a pleasure having you in the class. Um, I hope that, uh, I'm, I'm sure that the subsequent classes may not even have, I pray they will have better privilege, but I know that it's easier to not show few than very many. So you are very privileged to have had been our first participant in this program. So uh, thank you very much. Um, like yesterday or day before, we will allow you to share one or two things about your experience in this lecture. And uh, he will also now come in to give you his final words as we begin to round up. So um, we'll start from you, uh, our deputy director. What has been your experience? Then we are mute uh, Anthony. Then, you know, of course, we are seeing Samuel for the first time very well today. Go back to the videos, watch them. They are very explicit and very instructive. You'll be glad you do. 
So um, let's just start from, uh, or let's turn it around the other way around. Let's leave it, let's turn the other way around. Let's start from you. Um, JC Benson, is your speaker right? On mute, JC, let's hear of his experience in this uh, three days uh, lecture. On mute him, let us, let's hear him. What's your takeaway? Jesse, please unmute your your device. Okay. Hello. I think he's having challenge with his device. Let's move straight on without wasting time to move on mute. Uh... Okay. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. I've done that already. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can hear you now. Please, you have the flow. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um. We, we, this this within the period period of uh, lectures from the beginning to this period, I've learned a lot, so much. In fact, I, it has really boosted my morals, as the military will say. Uh, I, I have learned that um, because I was, was intending going for the commercial loan, if it happens that I may not secure this one, but I've learned that it is not a good thing to go for any commercial uh, loan to invest yet. And also uh, the process. In fact, I, I had it in mind to go into hashing as a beginner. But um, I, I, I learned that it is not advisable for a beginner to go into hashing. And um, though it has now allowed me to put a hole to that and then um, I will go into uh, the, uh, the full grown fish, start from there. And then the issue of, um, if I can, because before, I don't know, when they talk about 2mm, 3mm and all these things, in fact, I don't know much about them. I've learned a lot about those ones, which uh, 2mm to be given to this, some of the terminologies in regard to the feet and uh, the kind of fish and um, in fact a lot of things. I am very sure and uh, in fact the first day I ventured into, I went for this training. The next day what I did was in fact I had to go and look for phones. Uh, I had to hire phones, get myself ready. In fact, as of today, in fact, I even want to see if I can even go and start clearing the farm. So uh, I have learned a lot and it has really boosted my morals. So I am good to go. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, you can unmute uh, Adejo Samuel Kehinde, please. Thank you. Kende, you can omit from your computer or your device. Mr. Kende, please unmute your device. On speaker from your device. Okay, maybe you're struggling with it. Okay, let's move on to Anthony. Can I unmute everybody so that in, in, in doing so, it can activate his own as well. Okay. Uh, hello. Hello. Am I on? Yes, please. Yes, you're on. All right. Um, this three days has been so wonderful to me. And I've, I've 
learned so much, so much value has been added to my knowledge because of this training. As I said earlier on, that if I had gotten this training before going to this business about six years ago, I would have gone far by now. But it's not yet late, but it is not good. Um, Yes, it, I have I have about eight pounds and only three can hold water effectively. But from this training now, uh, with my interaction with uh, Mr. Akinfish, I know those pounds that are bad, they can still come back to operation. I'm very sure of that. And the the pounds are not waste. And um, you see, there's the passion I have for this for this business or for this family is so great that I am indirectly preparing for my retirement. Although I'm still young in civil service, but I'm preparing for my retirement already. Uh, luckily for me, my wife, my children, whenever they're in Abuja, they so much love this fish business. If I just like a family business, my daughter can discharge the water. They know how to put on the pumping and they know how to pump the, the water into the pond. Yes, and on mute, Aki. On mute, Aki. Fish. On mute, Aki. Fish, please. Okay. Go ahead, please. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. So, 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 uh, with this experience I've got in so far, if by the grace of God I get this facility, I know I will bounce back very, very well. At the moment, the the the, the fishes I have in my pond is for for personal and for family use. Uh, we just smoke some locally and we consume it. But now I think I'll go to processing, which is good. And if things stabilizes very, very well, uh, my wife may leave the services of of Kogi State Government, where their salaries are paid on percentage, ten percent, twenty percent, which is not funny. Yeah, it's going to be family business. So I so much value has been added to my knowledge in this fish farming. I thought I made it all, but I know with this what I, what I've seen so far, I'm a beginner, and I'm trying to see if I can convince other friends to come in the, into this training, so that they also benefit from your wealth of knowledge. I, I to, the, to the organizers, to so our resource persons, you guys are great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if uh, uh, Adejo Samuel Ekende is ready now to offer his mind with respect to the three days um, training, even though we saw him. We've just seen him for the first time today. Can you please unmute him, please? I have. Okay. Can you unmute yourself? Unmute yourself, sir. Unmute from your device. Someone is aiding him. Okay. Okay. So the, he has done that. The fish, he has done that. If I put the the fish, how many weeks that I can take come out the water I put the new one? Okay. Um we will advise that you go through the videos. Okay? The videos that we we shared with you from the beginning and yes. the lesson notes that we are going to post. Okay, but well, probably when Akin Fish is reacting, he will answer your question as well. Thank okay. you. Is there any other thing? Um, our baby, yes, your okay. experience the last two days. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't join from Tuesday, I joined in yesterday. But, um, one of the things I learned is uh, about the drying, usually, I see them drying it locally, on the they roast it. You know, but I got additional knowledge of oven drying method and the duration it takes and the process it takes to to dry the fish, which makes it more hygienic because the local method of drying the the fish, some use cow dung, some use different things. And then like Akim Fish said, uh, since he, he, he tried importing his they used to measure the, uh, uh, the quantity of carbon in the fish. And carbon is all good for human consumption. So these are all the things that I was able to learn through the dry, the, the fish drying. 
the things to look out for so that to, your fish will be very good for consumption. It's one of the things I learned. Okay. Um, thank you so very much. Um, Akin Fish, are you still there? We can't see you. Okay, so that's okay. everything that has been said thus far and learned thus far. Um, so I don't know, you can just uh, give them the final uh, instruction and answer uh, Mr. Sam's uh, question as well. If you, I know you heard it. Thank you. Okay, thank you word. very much. Everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been great teaching this class with Dr. Sam. I first want to thank Dr. Sam. Dr. Sam has been supportive, you know, personally and for the class. He's been, he's been a wealth of knowledge. You know, um, all the materials you see that we are putting out there, I mean, Dr. Sam and I worked on them, you know, sent them back and forth, you know, and I'm really grateful for, for you, sir. Um, I also want to thank the, I mean, the National Open University for the opportunity to teach. Um, it's, always, it's always a blessing to be able to give back. Um, so basically, if you have any questions, you want to watch the video again, I know we talked extensively on everything which we caps over and over again. So. Um, you asked about how, how, um, how, how many days it would take for you to clean the water, for you to change the water. Um, if it's a mobile pond, um, you probably change it more frequently, like concrete ponds and stuff. But I tell people, whenever it's dead, to change it, right? However, for an etin pond, see, that's one of the advantages of the mobile pond. But see, the stocking density of a mobile pond, if you do a 20 by 10 by 4 feet pond, you can put like 1,000 fish in there. But for an 18 pond, for each 1,000 fish, you're probably talking of like half plot of land. So you don't need to change the water as much in a 18 pond. However, maybe once in a month or once in like six weeks would be a good time to pump out the water and pump in the water. Maybe once in six weeks or once in a month. However, some other people don't even change their water all through, all through, the, all through their family. Uh, all the best. Um, if you have any questions, you know, facts, figures, your business plans, send them to Dr. Sam. He will reach out to me and, um, you know, so that, you know, so yeah. So, any other questions you have, facts, figures, to look through your business plan and everything, you can send it to, you can send it to Dr. To Dr. Sam. Presence of Amoeba, is it good for fish? The, Amoeba is made from algae. All right? So, algae. I'll, you want your fish pond to have green something to show that it can support life. So if you think you will ever do fish and not have it on your pond, it's almost impossible. But it should not be too much because it will block the oxygen that your fish is supposed to need to convert to, to, to convert the feed. So um, so we always have it, even though some people don't like to see it, but we always have it. It's part of it. It's part of the business. So yeah, so that was all the best. All of, that was it for me. Have a nice day, everybody. God bless you. It's been nice to change you. Yes, if you have any questions, I said to you. Have a great Sam. Yes, thank you so much. Sam will... Thank you. Have a great moderator. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, are we through, sir? Yeah, both of turns on behalf of the That's universe. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so, on behalf of the Directorate of Entrepreneurship and Journal Studies, National Open University of Nigeria, we want to thank you so much for your time, for enrolling with us. This is our first time out, and we want to thank you for trusting us and enrolling with us. And we hope you'll put to use all the things you've learned, and we wish you success in your businesses. Thank you to our facilitators, our wonderful Akin Kingfish. Thank you for the wealth of knowledge you've shared with us. It has encouraged a lot of us. And thank you to our amiable Dr. Aonomate. Thank you so much uh, for the academic and the practical knowledge as well. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you all. And looking forward to the next time we we'll meet. Thank you. Thank you. I'll meet everybody, please. Okay, yeah, the materials will be given to you. We've sent it to Alima. Uh, Alima will upload them on the platform for you. Okay.
I say thank you. I have one thing against uh, uh, King Kingfish. I wanted to take him out yesterday. He is Aki Fish, oh, please. Okay, Aki Fish King. Okay. I I have one thing against him. I wanted to take him out yesterday. He's just... Aki Fish. Okay. Aki Fish. Okay. Okay. Hello, Dr. Johnson. Out yesterday. He just uh, did not accept. Okay, me. please. You, you, did you have the question? All right, Doctor. Who is speaking? I think Dr. it's Mr. Kendi. Can you just repeat the question, please? Okay, there's no more question again. We're just appreciating Akin. Mr. Sani, you can put on the chat also. Because we can hear you very clearly. Okay. Um, so we're rounding up. We were, we were yeah. saying. Uh, I think that's all. Um, they will get in touch with us later. Mr. Sani, you can put it on the chat. You can chat it up. I think so there's no question. Sure we are to. It's not on this platform, so okay. Oh no, it's on. It's a noise from the background. Thank okay. you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish you the best. Thank Bye -bye. you very much, everyone. Yes, you can. Thank stop. you very much.